In this example, what I'm gonna do is show you another polynomial long division problem. This one's a little more complex though. You'll see here I've got a polynomial of degree three. This is not one that you can just factor by conventional means. So what I'm gonna do is show you how this polynomial long division process works. In this case, we will get a remainder, so I'll also show you how to deal with that. First thing you wanna do is just take note here. They're trying to trick you with this problem. They're putting the term with the highest degree second. It's very important to make sure you arrange your terms in order of the decreasing power on X. So you wanna take this term and just simply switch it with this first term. So what I've done is I've done that and I've written that underneath this long division sign. All right, so what I'm gonna do is same thing as what I did in the previous video. If you haven't watched that, I'd recommend watching that one first. Uh, what I did is a, an example with just a trinomial, a little bit simpler example. This one's a little more advanced. Same thing, I'm gonna take this first term of two X cubed and I'm gonna say, well, what is two X cubed divided by X? If I just divide out an X, I'm gonna be left with one less X. So I'd have two X squared. And you remember in the last video, I wrote that term over top of the term with a similar exponent on X. All right, so I'm putting two X squared over top of this negative three X squared term. Next thing I do is I take that term and I say, okay, if I multiply two X squared by X, what do I get? Or we chose that term so that we would get the exact same value as the first term here, so two X cubed. I should also take that term and say, well, what's two X squared times negative two? I'm gonna write that underneath this three X squared term. So no surprise there, two X squared times negative two is negative four X. Next thing I did is I subtracted this is a situation where you've got a negative minus a negative. So you gotta be very careful here. Put this in brackets and you're gonna subtract your entire expression. So two X cubed minus two X cubed, no surprises, I get zero there. If I have negative three X squared and I subtract negative four X squared, that's the same as adding four X squared. So I should get X squared here. I, I always recommend just taking a break here. Just take a step back and, and look and just make sure that you have in fact subtracted correctly. The next thing that I did was I brought down this 8x term. Remember, we have to do that to make sure we have enough terms to continue. I'm essentially, like I said, done with all this work. And now I'm doing a new problem where I'm going to see what, what, what's x squared divided by x. Okay, so that's the next thing I'm going to ask myself. x squared divided by x, we know is just x. I put that over top of my x term. And I'm going to go through the same procedure. I'm going to take x and multiply by x. I'm going to take x and multiply by negative 2 and, and see what I get. X times X should be X squared, no surprises there. X times negative two, a similar situation here where I'm gonna subtract and see what I get. All right, don't forget, it's important to put that second expression in brackets because we do have negatives here. So you be very, very careful. X squared minus X squared is zero. I don't even write that. I take eight X minus negative two. So I'm adding positive two. You should see that I get 10 X there. You're essentially, if you think about it, you're done with all of this stuff and you're continuing on. But before we continue on, it's important for us to bring down that negative 12 so that we have enough terms to continue. And then I start over again. I say, well, what's 10x divided by x? We got 10 and I'm going to take that 10 and I'm going to do the same procedure. Take 10, I'm going to multiply by x. I take 10, I'm going to multiply by negative 2. 10 times x, I write as 10x. 10 times negative 2 is negative 20 and I'm gonna continue in the same way where I just simply subtract the second expression from the first, putting brackets around the second because I am dealing with negatives. The only thing of interest here is negative 12 minus negative 20. That turns into addition of 20 and I get a remainder of eight. This is what we call a remainder. So the last thing to note here is that all this work we did on the left is really just kind of considered rough work. It's a good idea to sort of summarize what you found in a sort of statement. What you can do is you can write your original expression. You can say I divided that by my divisor of x minus 2. The result I obtained was this trinomial up here with a remainder of 8. Now I write the remainder of 8 over top of my divisor. And the reason for that is that if I were to take this expression, this binomial, and multiply it up to the other side. What you want to see is that divisor cancel out and be left with an expression that could be used to check your answer. If I multiply up that, that binomial over to the other side, you can see that it cancels out that divisor. And I'm left with a statement that should be true. If I, if I distribute this x into the brackets, use sort of like a FOIL process, same thing with the negative 2. And if I tack that 8 on in the end, I should obtain my original expression back again. Don't forget to state restrictions. Remember, this is a situation where if you take a look at the denominator here, if I subbed in 2, divide by 0, math kind of explodes in your face and you get a situation that's not possible. You can't divide by 0. Uh, so it's important to specify that x cannot equal 2. 
and that would be our, our restriction in this case.